Sometimes you choose the tech news, and sometimes the tech news barges into your room and throws you into an unmarked SUV, and today was the second one for me. Apple finally addressed the question of what its compliance with the EU's Digital Markets Act rules will look like, and the answer is malicious. I was hoping it would be delicious, but we didn't. Close. I mean, it sounds good at first. Apple announced that iOS will support third-party app stores, they call them marketplaces, as well as third-party payment systems and browser engines other than WebKit, so you can actually use a browser that isn't just Safari covered in Chrome spray paint. But then you realize these delicious treats are only coming to the EU because they're actually really dangerous and you're not sure you want them anymore anyways because you think you saw Apple spit on them before handing them out. Alternative app marketplaces must be authorized by Apple and all the apps that they host must be notarized. A perfectly dystopian sounding Appleism for reviewed by bots and humans. Prepare to be notarized. <laughs> While many are repeating claims that iOS will support sideloading, installing standalone app packages outside of any app store, like you can do on Android, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, it won't support that. And it only gets wilder. In order for developers to distribute their apps on alternative app marketplaces, or even use third-party payment processes, they need to accept the new business terms. This is the new business now, <laughs> get used to it. That includes paying a lower 10% cut of the App Store revenue, or 17% for digital goods and services, plus an extra 3% to use Apple's own payment system, which will also spare users from the pop-up warning them that they may be about to hand over their savings to a Nigerian prince if they don't use the right one. But the new terms also include Apple's own version of Unity's scandalous per install fee from last year. Once an app hits 1 million installs, its devs will have to pay a core technology fee or CTF of 50 euro cents for every new user who installs it annually. As in the app can be reinstalled by the same user for no charge for 12 months. For some devs, this could see Apple taking something like a 60% cut of their app revenue. Now, if you think crossing your fingers and hoping that your app doesn't get too popular sounds kind of stressful, developers can always stick with the current business terms and swear off the cool new stuff. They could also target iPad OS, where first installs won't trigger the CTF apparently. Developers of app marketplaces, however, will have to pay the CTF every time the marketplace app is installed, including the first million. They'll also have to get a letter of credit from an A-rated financial institution of a million euros. Altogether, the deal doesn't sound too good, and in their explainers, Apple is making it clear that's by design. The company explained that it's only making the new features available in the EU because they're actually super dangerous. And in the EU, they can take that. We're, we're soft and vulnerable. I mean, the App Store's harsh protections blocked $2 billion worth of fraudulent transactions in 2022, the same amount that Google blocked in the same year on the far less restrictive Play Store. But there's way more Android phones in the world and they're way harder to use for babies. <laughs> the argument's confusing. But Apple did announce one thing that appears to be just straight up good news, game streaming platforms like Nvidia's GeForce Now and Xbox Cloud Gaming can now submit a single iOS app with the capability to stream their entire library of games, which is, again, how things already worked on other operating systems, but not on the minimalist Fisher Price of phone OSs. Your minimalist baby will love it. Apple previously wanted Nvidia and Microsoft to create an app store listing for every individual game in their streaming catalogs, a request the two tech giants responded to with, Pff, <laughs> Interestingly, GeForce Now was the only way to play Fortnite on iOS since Epic Games removed it in 2020 when it started its whole app store mud fight with Apple. But now that iOS will support third-party app stores, Epic Games plans to finally launch the Epic Games Store and Fortnite on iPhone, even though Epic boss Tim Sweeney thinks the new rules are, quote, hot garbage. Whether they actually go through with that launch also depends on whether Apple authorizes their upcoming app marketplace, which I have a feeling is somewhat unlikely as long as Sweeney keeps characterizing Apple's announcements as a, quote, horror show. Tim Cook expects some level of decorum here. 
I do not suffer impudence from whinging vermin. Guards! <laughs> now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Manscaped. If you're feeling a little overgrown, trim your hedges the manly way with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0. Its trimmer blade and foil blade are interchangeable, letting you choose between buzz cut bald or Mr. Clean Bald. And to navigate through those more voluminous spots, the Lawnmower 5.0 even comes with an LED light so you can see right through the shrubbery. It's also portable and charges conveniently with a USB C cable, meaning you can whack the weeds anywhere you might be. Check out the Lawnmower 5.0 at manscaped.com slash techlinked and use code techlinked for 20% off and free shipping. Okay, I, uh, I think all the Apple news has left by now. I, we, we, can, we can do the quick bits. Oh God, there's, th there's one more in the corner. It's standing there the whole time. What? You know, that's kind of creepy, right? I'm still here. <laughs> Users of Beeper Cloud, the service that lets you route iMessages to your Android phone through your Mac computer, reported earlier this week that Apple was blocking them from using iMessage even on their Macs, which were flagged for spam. Because while Apple values the user experience above all, their other core tenet is naughty children must be punished. <laughs> After the New York Times reported on the issue and reached out to Apple, Apple did not respond to the New York Times, but suddenly started unbanning these users. For now, Beeper has disabled Beeper Cloud functionality anyways, while they apparently try to find yet another workaround. I don't know, if Apple's compliance with the DMA is any indication, you might just have to get your mom an iPhone. Thousands of users reported that Microsoft Teams was down today, including many users from our own office, tragically blocking us from posting in the company-wide short joke group chat that is our comm system. <laughs> like a Keebler elf. <laughs> I swear we're a real company. Down Detector reported nearly 15,000 outages as of noon Pacific time. Microsoft gave a vague statement on Twitter acknowledging the problem and blaming it on a non-specific networking issue rats got into the pipes. Notably, this outage comes less than a week after Microsoft disclosed an attack from a Russian-sponsored hacker and underrated My Little Pony character, Midnight Blizzard. <laughs> they shelved him in the first season. He was just not, it's a, it's a boy. Florida's House of Representatives has passed a bill that, if passed by the Senate and then signed by the governor, will ban children under 16 from social media platforms that track users' activity and use that information to provide targeted content. A primary concern is social media's potentially addictive nature, with one state representative comparing it to a kind of digital fentanyl. The bill has excluded platforms mainly used for messaging, non-user generated entertainment, and professional networks. So if you're 14 in Florida, maybe now's the time to become a LinkedIn influencer. It's, it's gonna be the hot new thing. Business. <laughs> Google has released a research paper and a demo video for Lumiere, something they're calling a space-time diffusion model which sounds like a teleporter that turns users into a fine mist, but is actually an impressive text-to-video and image-to-video generation tool. The output is surprisingly realistic and smooth compared to past attempts at AI video generation. I mean, just look at all these animals with the correct number of eyes and limbs. Wow. And these raccoons reading hovering books. <laughs> Try it out. Be our guest. Lumiere even has the ability to take the style from a reference image and incorporate it in a new video, as well as alter existing footage, like this horrifying woman flower homunculus. The future is bright. <laughs> and Meta's Reality Labs has created a way of allowing VR users, as well as virtual characters and experiences, to appear to manipulate real world objects. They demonstrated this concept in a video where a, thankfully fake, hideous monkey peanut monster thing grabs a very real drink cart and throws it down the stairs before escaping justice by taking the elevator. The user in that scenario was moving real slow. They could have got it. Now in reality, the VR program creates a virtual double of the object and simultaneously erases the original from sight. It's super cool, though it feels like maybe they should be working on other things like how to get the Quest 3's pass-through mode to work on a plane, or even when you just decide to stand up or go downstairs. The Vision Pro can do it, Meta. Honestly though, check the video out for yourself. Just be prepared for the nude minion streaking through the frame at three minutes and 45 seconds. I just, 
If you're not into that, maybe avoid. And don't break your streak. Haha. <laughs> Come back on Monday for more tech nudes. <laughs> no, I'm not, 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 not news. Not not news. No.